samples uh, to be loaded on a um, payload for the space shuttle um, endeavor. Um, returning uh, today, I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to talk about the slightly um, more glamorous topic of genome scaffolding. Um, I divided this, this talk into two parts. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Lynx, uh, which is a software that I developed um, uh, over the course of the past year and a half to tackle um, uh, essentially scaffolding of draft genomes with uh, erroneous long reads. So you may not know me by name, um, but um, I have been involved in the genomics community for, for a long time. Um, I developed uh, Saki, the uh, first uh, short read assembler in 2006, uh, and then followed by the targeted uh, uh, assembly program Taser, uh, which, uh, which has application for HLA typing. Uh, so HLA minor is also a tool that I developed. Um, but uh, let's talk about, about links. So that's a highlight talk. So I'm going to talk about briefly about uh, uh, that publication. So links was published last year in Giga Science. And um, second half of my talk, I'll, I'll uh, focus on genomics technologies that our group uh, develops at the BC Cancer Agency Genome Sciences Center in Vancouver uh, in the lab of Vinod Baral. Uh, notably, uh, Sealer, which is an automated gap filler for, for genome uh, assemblies, uh, which uh, uses the connector uh, assembly engine. Connector implements a, uh, the Bruin graph um, bloom filter. I'll talk briefly about that as well. All right, so, so Lynx is a scaffolder. Uh, what does that do? Uh, well, I mean, it's just essentially simply put, uh, orders and orients uh, sequence contigs or, or scaffolds, whatever you want to scaffold into a higher arrangement. Um, called a scaffold, but, but if you apply that to a scaffold, I suppose that, that would be called an ultra scaffold or ultra conting. Um, the, the key, uh, I guess, advance in links is it's um, KMER based, so there's no alignments of read necessary. You can ex explore a very vast KMER space, uh, so you're not limited to a fragment library at a specific size distribution. Um, you can apply this to long reads, to um, if you have uh, another assembly done a different K, for instance, you can use that to, to scaffold and you can use that also uh, on, now on MPET library data. Uh, the key, uh, uh, I guess, features is that you can use reads of different lengths, different error profiles, and uh, no need for base correction, although correcting your reads ahead of time will improve uh, the scaffolding process. So this diagram depicts briefly what, uh, what it does. It's very simple. Extract KMER pairs at a fixed distance between uh, between between KMERs, and the ones the ones in blue are found in, in your in your draft genomes. Um, so there is data structure that will load all the KMERs in your draft assembly and filter out the ones that are not in there. That's quite useful if your long reads are coming from the Oxford Nanopore Pack Bio, which actually contain a little bit, little bit more errors. So these are shown in red. They're not found in your draft genomes, and they're not going to be used for for scaffolding. Uh, there's been three major releases in the past year. The first release um, uh, implements a custom bloom filter that our lab developed. And um, uh, we also developed a, uh, a new hashing algorithm to interact with that bloom filter to perform set operations on that bloom filter. And, and this work is being presented here at ISMB. In the, that's uh, a, a work of Hamid Mohammadi, uh, who is here in the audience today. And the, poster number N72, so if you want to check it out. Um, so there's huge gain uh, in, in time, time performance using uh, empty hash with a combination of this bloom filter, uh, 22x uh, speed up. There's marginal gains in the memory usage, but, but still very welcome. Um, but for me, uh, who, de who has developed this and, and uses it for uh, scaffolding large genomes such as human, spruce, and, and bullfrog at 6 giga, giga base, uh, is the ability to, to produce very large genome filters, which was not possibly, uh, which was not possible before, uh, taking about five hours uh, and 178 gigs of RAM for, for the genome, uh, the large genome of spruce at 20 gigs, uh, gigabases. And uh, this this uh, new release also implements a graph output, which can be used for troubleshooting as well. Uh, another fe new feature of, of Lynx is the possibility to scaffold with MPET. I mean, it's not designed to do this, but it does support MPET scaffolding. So MPET are long-range jumping libraries, some of which are 20 KB in distances. 
And um, you can then explore a very, or, or exploit rather, the massive debt uh, provided by, by MPET sequences. Uh, still no alignments. And uh, so the reason I mentioned some of the software I developed is it, it uses as input a format very similar to, to what uh, is input in the Saki assembler to extract Kamer pairs uh, between the, uh, the MPET pairs. Uh, this feature also implements scaffolding checkpoints, which is uh, very useful for testing uh, many different hypotheses, uh, different linkages, uh, thresholds uh, between, uh, between contigs, and also support for uh, compressed files. Oh, yeah, so this is just a result of MPET scaffolding to, I guess, um, uh, convince you that it, that it does what, what's it in, what it is intended. So in gray, it's uh, the scaffolding of E. coli. So with a baseline, we had a baseline assembly, um, uh, which was uh, relatively uh, contiguous at 180 uh, kilo base pairs. And GA50, which is a, a metric that uh, um, uh, essentially that uh, tracks the contiguity of your assembly, uh, which is corrected for genome size and also take into account uh, assembly errors. So with links, um, the, the resulting assembly is in half the amount of, of uh, initial sequences, uh, but you can see that there's four large ones. So that's the, the dot plot on the right side, four, four large ones that um, uh, comprise the entire genome. And the NGA50 uh, climb up to, to about 300K. Uh, for human, uh, the results are even more no noticeable. Uh, and the, the MPET library we had were, were quite comprehensive, about 150x coverage and 175x coverage. So there are, these are public data sets. Uh, so the NA19238 individual uh, gave us a NGA50 of 473x. So an order of magnitude uh, more contiguous, uh, the resulting assembly with, uh, with that version of links. And the genome in, in a bottle, uh, HG004 individual, we obtain an even more contiguous assembly um, after MPET scaffolding. Um, so that pretty much uh, wraps up the, the, the new features of Link. So version 1.8 uh, implements a native uh, Kimmer length interval. So prior to this, um, what I recommended people do is run Link several times in iterations using the output of the first iteration as input to the next. Uh, it's cumbersome uh, and annoying. Uh, so this, uh, new release implements uh, the ability to, to input various distances from, from short to long. And um, as you can see, the amount of time uh, that it, uh, it takes to run has, uh, has increased uh, significantly. I'm, pr so I'm pretty uh, satisfied with this. And also this feature um, implements uh, prioritization of proximal contigs. So that uh, just this diagram shown here in, in the bottom in blue. You have two uh, fairly large scaffolds, 28 and 40, 41, and a lot of linkages su supporting this, this merge. But the thing is, you have very short contigs that can be actually uh, put in the gap between them. And there's actually slightly less uh, KM repair supports. Um, but by prioritizing the short uh, to large gaps allows you to put uh, to in place nine uh, right in the, in the gap, uh, as, you, as seen here in the dot plot on the, on the right side. So the second half of my talk, I'll be talking uh, about a genome assembly toolkit. So our lab develops um, uh, technologies, uh, bioinformatics technologies for genome assembly, and we have for um, numerous years now. Uh, you would undoubtedly uh, um, have uh, known Abyss, which is our, our flagship um, software. Um, so Abyss was the, the first uh, genome assembler to assemble the human genome. Uh, with short reads, and it did that um, by um, uh, aggregating memory from multiple computers using a message passing interface. Um, now we have a new version of this tool that implements uh, a De Bruijn graph via a Bloom filter data structure. And I, so I've mentioned Bloom filter several times uh, already. The Bloom filter is a succinct probabilistic data structure. And I invite you to uh, visit uh, poster N18 uh, tonight from uh, Ben van der Valk, who, who uh, led these efforts. And, and what we can do with this is we can actually achieve 
uh, an assembly in about a tenth of the memory that is otherwise required for, to assemble the human genome. So assembling the human genome um, with abyss, with regular stock abyss, um, requires between 400 gigs of RAM to uh, in the upwards of one terabyte of RAM, which is significant uh, and, and not possible if you don't have a compute cluster. Um, but now what this allows you to do is do a genome assembly of human on a single machine with uh, between 40 and 50 gigs of RAM. BioBloom Tools is another software that uh, uh, we're investing in. It's a sequence classification tool um, with bloom filters. It's meant for general, general purpose filtering, also contaminant screen, and um, uh, also you can use it for pathogen discovery and metagenomics uh, applications. Uh, BioBloom Tools is uh, used uh, routinely uh, in TCGA uh, to look for, for, for pathogen and um, has been used by the TCGA analysis working group. So it comprises essentially two software, BioBloom Maker, which allows you to make a bloom filter uh, that are reusable and, and, and flexible. And now with uh, the addition of BioBloom Map, so for those who went to HitSeq and, and uh, attended uh, Justin Shu's talk, you know what I'm talking about allows you to create uh, a single bloom filter, uh, but uh, f enables you to, to classify reads uh, that, w that, that uh, could belong to different reference sequences. And that's the other um, component of BBT is BB, uh, the BioBloom categorizer, which allows you to partition reads uh, into the various uh, bloom, well, bloom filters or, or, um, or, or the, the, the different partition that uh, the, that um, bloom map um, allows you to, uh, to set. Uh, so Justin doesn't have a, a poster at ISMB, but um, if you want to, uh, to talk to Justin uh, and don't know him, you can come and talk to me at the end of the talk and I'll uh, put you in touch with him. Uh, BBT is an es essential component of Collector, which is a pipeline to do targeted assembly of gene loci, but using uh, RNA. So you have transcripts. Uh, the transcripts are camerized, uh, and the, the camers are uh, essentially uh, used to build a bloom filter. You pass your reads through, and you can do several passes of that. So that's shown here in red. You've got the, the camers uh, from the target, so that your, your transcript. And in red with the arrow, these are your reads. They're being recruited as they're passed through the bloom filter, and they're, they're, uh, the, mate, uh, the mates from, from these reads are also recruited in several iterations. And then you end up with sufficient coverage to do a de novo assembly of this. Uh, we did this on Bullfrog. We started with about 800,000 transcript, and we were able to um, assemble 80% of the corresponding gene loci for this. And I'll show you why this is important. Um, very briefly, Rails is an application that is derived from, uh, from links, more or less. Uh, it doesn't use camers. It relies on alignments of long sequences. Um, so these sequences, of course, have to be really high quality. You align them to your draft genome, and you order and orient your sequences, and then you fill the gap with these sequences. So, of course, you probably don't want to use PacBio or uh, Oxford Nanopore uh, for, for that, um, but it's still better than, than putting a, a bunch of ends. And um, I guess finally for this, uh, automated gap closure with Sealer. So the difference between Sealer and other tools is uh, this uh, implements a, um, a um, bloom filter, the Bruin graph, because its assembly engine is connector and uh, can scale all the way to spruce. And um, so connector is a, an assembler for paired and reads. Uh, here we don't have paired and reads, but we have sequences that can be a proxy for this. So flanking sequences on the edge of a gap are extracted, and then this is the source of your, uh, of your start in goal camers to navigate the De Bruin graph. And the source of camers is essentially your shotgun reads that are filled into a bloom filter. So we ran this on spruce. We had two genotypes of, of the spruce genome. Uh, we did a uh, few K values uh, because uh, it takes a long time to run, but uh, we needed only about 44 gigs of RAM. Uh, okay, so uh, briefly here, uh, so this is a method in, in development. Um, so I have three slides on that. So, uh, so recently, Gem, uh, 10X Genomics has um, commercialized the um, uh, technology uh, that uh, essentially uses the Illumina platform um, to, to sequence very large fragments. And the reads are um, 
uh, are essentially indexed. So you, you have sub 1x coverage uh, sequence of uh, very large fragments, but what you have uh, as a piece of information is all the reads from a given fragments are tagged with the same index. And so we're using this uh, information to capture long range information from these fragments, which could be in, in the upwards of, uh, of 100 KB, 200 KB. And uh, the goal is to identify scaffolds that could co-locate and uh, in the same um, in the same chromosome, for instance, and the uh, ultimate goal is to improve the novo assembly. So the method is very simple. We take the reads, we align them against our draft assembly, and we draw an edge between two sequences if there's suffi sufficient linkages. In this case, linkage is uh, the uh, number of indices that support this merge. And we looked at um, a specific distribution because um, not all indices have the same number of reads and some of the indices are also reused which actually create a, a, a bit of a complication for this uh, this application and we end up with with groups so there are uh, two public data sets for this uh, for the uh, human sample NA12878 this is gem code data 35x coverage and we have chromium data 25 uh, 25x coverage so sli slightly less we start with a contig baseline of about 60 KB, and uh, we can scaffold giving us an, an N50 uh, that, that is a bit beyond one megabase. Um, and, uh, the, and then we do the, our assessment of, of whether or not uh, uh, the groupings are, are correct by uh, passing them through BBT. And uh, we see that with Chromium, we have a, a very high accuracy of assignment of these, of these groups, and that's most likely because the number of partitions in, in Chromium is much larger than, than GEMCO. There's 4 million indices versus 700,000 in, in, uh, in, the, gem, in the, the GEM code. Uh, on the right, you see a, a, an example of a chimera group that came from the GEM code scaffolding with uh, the ones in green uh, being assigned to different chromosomes than the ones in blue. All right, so if you, you thought your day was actually going bad, um, this uh, could be worse. <laughs> Um, so this is actually happening not very far from here in the Everglades, I suppose. Um, so uh, this is uh, my summary slide here, uh, just showing you all this, uh, the tools that I talked about, well, most of them, uh, starting with Abyss uh, on the bullfrog genome, which is a six, six gig gigabase genome, um, and we had an N50 of 23 KB. And of course, there's no reference for this genome. Um, but what we have is the ability to, to search for, for core eukaryotic genes as a, as a mean to, um, to look at assembly completeness. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, after scaffolding, we end up with an N50 that is uh, uh, more than doubled. And uh, we close the gap with sealer. And we use uh, several data sets for this molecular bullfrog collector and pet and draft assembly. Uh, that's really my last, one of my last slides, I came to last, sorry. Um, Please visit these. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna, if you, you're doing some work on genome, uh, on genomes, this is a, a good um, first step. Uh, not all of those are published, by the way, or are available like ARCs. So I'd like, uh, this is the work of, of many individual in our group that are named here, and also at ISMB. This work was possible from uh, funding from the NIH, BC Cancer Foundation, Genome BC, Genome Canada, Intel, and also the John Jambert Knowledge Fund who uh, subsidize uh, my travels. So thank you very much for your attention.